hello, with a net here. Welcome to another of my videos of stories about movie production gone wrong. Sometimes being big headed does not pay off. The Lost Patrol Directed by John Ford, this 1934 war film was a remake of the British silent movie, that was released in 1929. Both of these movies were based on the Philip MacDonald novel Patrol. These all focus on the British soldiers that become psychologically strained due to being stranded in the desert, many soldiers of Iraq surround the British soldiers. Victor McClaggle who played the sergeant, replaced Richard Dix, as Richard left the production to star in another movie. Victor came from a military background which helped with the production, as Victor was a World War I veteran who also was given the role as acting captain of the 10th Battalion Middlesex Regiment. Before serving with the Royal Irish Fusiliers, Victor also spent time in Baghdad where he was an assistant provost marshal. Boris Karloff, who played Sanders, had a heart murmur, this prevented him from joining the army when he tried to enlist in 1909. Wallace Ford who played Morelli served with the United States Cavalry in World War I, Reginald Denny who played George Brown also served in World War I. Reginald served with the Royal Flying Corps, where he was a gunner and observer. During World War II, Reginald founded a company that made radio-controlled target aircraft. The filming of The Lost Patrol took place in the Algodones Dunes, California and Yuma, Arizona. While filming in the Algodones Dunes between 31st of August and 22nd of September 1933, due to soaring high temperatures that year, John Ford decided that the filming would only take place in early mornings and late afternoons. Cliff Reed insisted that the midday break was to be reduced, which annoyed John Ford as he wanted to prevent the cast and crew becoming poorly due to the high temperatures. With pressure from RKO, who wanted to speed up the production, this caused confrontation, so Cliff Reed wanted to prove his point to John Ford by walking around the Algodones dunes in 120 degree Fahrenheit. Cliff Reed soon collapsed due to heat exhaustion, and was hospitalized for his condition. Sometimes decisions from actors can be deadly. The Godless Girl Directed by Cecil B. DeMille, this 1928 silent drama was based upon a real-life incident that took place at a Hollywood high school in 1927. Numerous of atheist pamphlets were found in students' lockers, which were thought to be placed there by the Atheist Society creator, who was a student named Judith Craig, a.k.a. Queen Silver. During filming of this production Lena Basquet who played Judith Craig, sustained serious blisters and burns, after both herself and another actor, George Durier became trapped in a burning building. George wanted out of the building as the pyrotechnic flames were getting too close to them both, Lena on the other hand wanted to stay to impress Cecil. The asbestos coating of the blazing building landed on their clothing, exposed skin and hair. Later the UCLA Film and Television Archive restored the movie's sound version, which was added to the final reel along with dialogue scenes. Cecil signed up with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer after he broke his contract with Puth, which meant Cecil could not supervise Fritz Feld with the sound sequences. Lena Basquet, wrote a biography after the production was released titled, Lena, DeMille's Godless Girl. Some directors are just mean. The Charge of the Light Brigade Directed by Michael Curtiz, this 1936 adventure movie was based on Lord Alfred Tennyson's 1854 poem, The Charge of the Light, which later became a story written by Michael Jacobi. Warner Bothers initially wanted a full English cast for this movie, but a Tasmanian man who was classed as being Irish, Errol Flynn, was accepted to play the leading role of Major Geoffrey Vickers. Patrick Knowles was accepted to play the role of Captain Perry Vickers, just after joining Warner Brothers. 
Two actors Basil Rathbone and Edward C. Robinson were tested to play the role of the lead villain Surat Khan, but C. Henry, Gordon was casted to play the main villain role. There were two locations where filming took place, one was in Lone Pine, California, and the other in Mexico. While the production was being filmed in California, the camera crew helped to put out a fire at a restaurant, which was across from where the actors were staying. In Mexico, where there were fewer restrictions on animals being used in a movie production, while filming the scene The Battle of Balaclava, which Lord Tennyson wrote about in his poem. Lancers were killed after charging into a valley, due to Russian cannons being fired upon them. Michael Curtiz did not have good English command when he asked for the horses with no riders to be called to the scene for filming. When these horses entered the battlefield set, they were tripped up by trip wires. Out of 125 horses, 25 of them had to be shot due to their injuries. Errol Flynn became furious with Michael Curtiz, due to the cruelty of the animals. As Errol was an accomplished horseman, Michael Curtis on the other hand was not, and Michael did not care about what had just occurred. This led to a physical fight between Errol and Michael, they were pulled apart before anything serious happened between them. After this incident, the United States Congress was forced to step in to ensure animal safety in future productions. The ASPCA also made sure that trip wires were banned from any future movie productions too, while filming the same scene a stuntman fell off his horse and landed on a broken sword that was upright in the field. This ultimately killed the stuntman. Due to the horses dying on scene, Warner Brothers would not re-release this movie, instead they sold the rights of this production to Associated Artist Production who would premiere the movie on television in 1956. In 1968, The Charge of the Light Brigade was remade. Freak accidents in film production sometimes occur. Such men are dangerous. Directed by Kenneth Hawkes, this 1930 drama is about a true story of a man, Alfred Lowenstein. Alfred was a Belgian banker who disappeared on a plane over the English Channel in 1928. A book was written by Eleanor Glynn about Alfred's mysterious disappearance. While filming on 2 January 1930, ten crew members died after a mid-air collision, just of the Californian coast near Santa Monica. Camera platforms were attached to two Detroit aircraft, for the people to perform a parachute jump. The wingtips of the planes touched while they were in the air, both the planes burst into flames before impacting the ocean, killing all ten people on board. Which included, assistant director Max Gold, cameraman Ben Frankel and Utho Jordan. Conrad Wells a cinematographer was also killed, same with the director Kenneth Hawkes. Two property men were also killed, as well as two pilots one of which was a Army Reserve flyer. Only five bodies were found after the incident, the accident happened in the final stages of production which led this movie to be completed and released on schedule. This incident became known as one of the worst air accidents in filming history. This accident did not happen on purpose. Jesse James Directed by Henry King this 1939 western is based on the iconic outlaw. The filming of the movie was in the state of Missouri, the town of Pineville in McDonald County looked as though it had not changed since the late 19th century. The Liberty Court House in Missouri, where the real-life Jesse James was persecuted, was filmed at the old McDonald County Court House, which is also placed in the National Register of Historic Places. Since filming, the citizens of Pineville hold an annual celebration to commemorate the infamous outlaw Jesse James. After a horse was driven off a cliff and died during filming, the American Humane Association got involved in future production to oversee animal safety. On Britain's Channel 4 website, 
the movie has been described as historically inaccurate. Thank you for listening. If you like my content, please like and subscribe. To keep up to date with any future videos, press that notification bell or follow me on Twitter at withanet1.